Warning. This game is rated M for Mature. This game involves acts of a violent nature, sensitive topics around sexual themes, and a very annoying talking bear. Fear discretion is advised. <sighs> Good morning, everyone. Over here, students talking. All this rain. I hate rain. It's supposed to keep raining until this evening. Speaking of misery, midterm start next Monday. They even post the re uh, results up for everyone to see. Oh, don't worry about it. Your life isn't going to be ruined by one piece of paper, is it? What? How can you possibly believe that? Getting good grades has benefit when you're interacting with people. And you know what they say? No, don't. I don't know what this what they say. Please do not explain it. Talented people really get highly valued in this society. Oh, I thought you were going to say the other part. Oh, with intimacy? Yeah. Oh, no, it's the sock puppet guy. Mr. Hosoi, have you ever picked up the latest edition of the bully teacher yet? Oh, of course I did. But it's raining today, and I hope we can get home without getting it, without it getting all wet. Uh, does anyone have an extra book cover? That'd be kind. Of, that'd be kind enough to lend to me. Whoops! I have to start. I have to start the lecture. Don't try distracting me about talking about books. Today we're going to discuss Kuroko by Soseki Natsume. Open your textbooks. Oh, before we actually get to the actual literature, I have a question about Soseki himself. So how about Gothic Chan, our city boy? Do you know how Soseki Natsume translated the English phrase I love you into Japanese? The moon is beautiful, isn't it? Oh, you're very knowledgeable. Yep, translated as the moon is beautiful, isn't it? Uh, you oftentimes hear this line said in anime, and it's really interesting whenever it pops up because it's because it's actually seeped back into uh, uh, to American culture of just like looking at something else to distract against like having to say something. You know, it's really interesting. By the way, the person who translated it as I could die was Shime Futabe, another prominent Meiji era writer. Though he translated from Russian, not English, it, it's still similar, but they didn't do direct translations. Back then in Japan, there wasn't the same direct expression of love that we have now. Now with like arranged marriages and marrying based off of honor and status than actual love, but so they had to get creative. It's subtle and daring translation. It's like the Japanese language itself. Anyway, let's get back to Kuroko. You gave the correct answer. Knowledge has increased. You hear thunder rumbling. Hey, Chie. I bought you a new copy of that Trial of the Dragon flick. Yosuke, you are standing. I am in between you two. Please do not bring up anything that would get you kicked. It was the Greatest Punches version for 980 yen. If I knew then, I'd just replaced it instead of buying you grilled steak. This is clearly getting closer. Huh? What are you, scared of a little lightning? Quiet, you! I'd be a goner if even one of those things hit me. <laughs> You're freaking out way too much. Come on, shouldn't weather like this help with your kung fu training? Yosuke, please do not say anything that would cause her to leap over me and try to hurt you. A bolt of lightning would hit and it'd give you the inspiration for a new move. There was a scene like that in your DVD, wasn't there? You jerk! You don't even care how I feel! If lightning has to strike someone, let it be this guy! Huh? That's what you get for saying that stuff, Chie. Looks like I better hurry up and head to work. By the way, I accidentally avoided uh, Yukiko's line. Uh, let's uh, go back and listen to that. Huh? Is this a blackout? Yes. Yes, it is. Depending on how produce sells today, I might get a little bonus in my pay for the week. This weather may keep customers away, but I gotta do my best if I'm gonna save up for a motorcycle.
It's from my manager. Hello? Uh, Yosuke Kun? Hmm. Uh, some of the power in the store is out after that lightning strike. C could you come in early today? All the refrigerated shelves have stopped running. It's looking like we'll have to close up the produce section early today. Wait, what? But my pay! Anyway, I need you here to help deal with this mess. I'm counting on you! Goodbye! Wait! Hey, Yosuke. What are you looking at me for? Uh, do you believe in karma? Because I believe in karma. And I think you deserve everything that comes at you. Uh, why did this have to happen? Hey, Yukiko! Can we just go home? Chie, do you know this story? A girl forgot her homework, so she snuck into school in the middle of the night, but she suddenly needed to use the bathroom. This better not go the way I think it's going. She ventured into the girls' room where all the lights were off. No one should have been there, but in the mirror... Okay, good. It's coming out of the mirror. I thought it was going to be the other version. Hold it right there! What are you talking about?! Huh? It's a ghost story. I thought you liked them. Yeah, but why tell it now?! Thank you for once again being the best girl in the, um, in the party, Yukio. Chie, on the verge of tears. What should you do? No, no, sure. Thanks. I'm glad you're here. Oh, I swallowed really hard. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, that's weird. Now it's like a weird buzzing in my ear. How'd that happen? Huh. Why was a cough so hard it knocked something loose? <sighs> Why don't you just have him escort you back home, Chie? Uh, are you making fun of me? Well, yeah, with how freaked out you are, can you blame me? Oh, the power's back! Come on, Yukiko, let's go home! Yukiko and Chie left in a hurry. So that's the for today. Who knows who's supposed to wait for another rainy night? Hmm? Oh! New stuff in the TV listings. Neat. Um, uh, let's... TV Classroom Lesson Number 2 is now available. I wonder what that means. I ask be Oh! There it is. Uh, what are Shadows and Personas? The first of ten simple informative lectures about Jungian psychology. <laughs> Uh, right. I should actually show these off eventually, but I just haven't yet. The unconscious, it's still there. The second of ten lectures. I think I might actually need to watch these for an achievement, so I'll probably just put them in... Uh, man, I should have actually... Wait, 15? Oh, this is a... Uh... Oh, okay. It's like a TV listing. This starts at that. This starts at um, hundred, and this starts at fifteen. So the next one will probably be like thirty, forty-five, and then on like that. Okay. So, oh, you know, I don't think I actually talked about this in an episode yet. Yeah, uh, shows and personas, and the collective unconsciousness are all based off of Jungian psychology. Um. Some of it's not really liked by more scholarly, scholarly people, but uh, the collective consciousness has dubious base in uh, in uh, academics. So I would actually look it up because it's still a really interesting thing, and there are a lot of people out there that still hold on that it's possible, but you know. Uh, you know what they say, like, uh, there's no way to verify it or unverify it, so, uh, well, that sort of thing. Okay, so just like how I had to, um, basically put it into the, uh, into the episode, um, I'm putting this one in here. Mr. Edogawa's TV Classroom. Hello everyone, it's time for Mr. Adagawa's TV Classroom again. 
Evelyn loves young in psychology. An invitation for you uh, to the you that you don't know. Today's installment is the unconscious. Okay, do you remember the last lecture? No, we're just glossing over it, are you? No, it's, uh, now let's begin the class. Saras, Guitar, Bessonar. I have no idea what these things he's saying are. I cannot remember if he mentions it in a three. Ah, oh, it's been so long since I've actually played three. <laughs> now, you heard me say young this, young that, but think of that guy, I never did explain who young was, did I? So this time, I'll give you some sort of biographical details throughout the lesson. Carl Jung was born in Switzerland at around like 1875. By the turn of the century, he had become a he had begun his career as a psychiatrist. He became a doctor who counseled people with mental illnesses. At the time, psychiatry was still in its early, very early stages of development. But there was one effective method of treatment known at the time. The method was hypnosis. Though the use of hypnosis through the use of hypnosis, Young and his fellow doctors were able to treat their patients' mental illnesses. While under hypnosis, the patient displayed sides of themselves they had never seen, as well as alternate personalities. So where did these hidden sides and other personalities come from? That became the question d'ojeur. Where are they hiding? Well, essentially, if a man could be aware of all the aspects of his mind, there'd be nowhere to hide. But as it happened, there was. The conclusion that the psychiatrist came to was that there existed an area of the mind that people were not aware of. That is, of course, the unconscious. The opposite of the conscious. And that is how doctors like Jung first discovered the existence of the unconscious in those days. I'm not sure how many of you know, but the one who contributed the most to the discovery of the unconscious was Sigmund Freud. Uh, fraud could be uh, considered Jung's mentor, but unfortunately we don't have much time to in uh, these lessons to discuss their relationship. Uh, the unconscious was discovered by a group of extraordinary men. For now, just remember that fact. Uh, Young and the people who worked with, not Sigmund Ford. Sigmund Ford was kind of a hack. <laughs> but you know, people still use things he came up with to kind of, as like basis for their arguments. So I uh, kind of think about it as like the founding block but not the one you should lean the most on. In fact, most people will consider most psychology kind of hackish, to be to be completely fair. No, let me ask you. When do you think of the unconscious? How do you feel? Ah, uh, I don't feel anything. You treat it like air then something you never really need to pay attention to. Well, perhaps your feelings about the unconscious will change after these lectures. If you tell me... If you tell me it's there, I feel vaguely like it is. But in daily life, it's hard to believe. Because you can't sense it. However, Young and the others claimed that you can detect the unconscious in your daily life, even without hypnosis. One way, though, is through slips. Clinically, um, these are known as parapraxis, things like a slip of the tongue or forgetting to do things fall into this category. Um, the most well-known slip is the Freudian slip in which you are trying so hard not to say something that you accidentally just say it. <laughs> I think you might actually say it. Yeah. <laughs> You've been in situations where you accidentally call someone such as your teacher mom, right? What you meant today was Miss Seiko, but something else slipped out. The unconscious is closer than you thought. Other way, another way to detect the unconscious is in dreams. That's easy to see, no? Typically, one dream, one dreams of things that are not possible in the real world. You may have surprised yourself before with dreams of things you've never experienced, have you? They really were beyond your imagination, were they? Something your conscious mind could never come up with. Yes, dreams are quite close to the unconscious. Dreams are an important subject in the study of Jungian psychology. We'll go over that in another lecture. 
As a psychiatrist, Jung considered the unconscious to be a big problem. Why? Because he considered it to be the cause of mental illness. This is how we solve things. In a healthy mind, the unconscious, the conscious was in control, reigning into the unconscious. But for his mentally ill parents, the unconscious broke free of its reins. Oh, I, I read that as parents, as patients. But for his mentally ill patients, the unconscious broke free of its reins and ran amok. Hearing it that way, you might think that the unconscious is a bad thing. But it's not quite how Young saw it. The uncontrolled unconscious taking over is a bad thing, yes. But the unconscious itself is not innately bad. What led him to this, say, uh, to say this, you might ask? His observations as a psychiatrist led him to realize that the cause of mental illness was actually on the conscious side. When you suppress your emotions too tightly, or work too hard, or stress yourself to your limit, the unconscious makes its move. E essentially, when the conscious mind becomes overtaxed and unbalanced, the unconscious mind comes out as if to stop it. The unconscious compensates for the conscious whether the latter extends itself. Seen this way, the unconscious definitely seems like something you'd want to have. Its role is to balance the mind. Now then, so far have uh, we have learned to view the mind as divided into conscious and unconscious halves. Next, let's talk about you. The you in your conscious mind is referred to in Jungian psychology as the ego. This too is now a common term which makes things complicated. <laughs> but for its purpose in the lecture, when I say ego, it will carry the Jungian meaning. The ego is the center of the conscious in the most respects, is the mind, but it is only you in the conscious sense. The domain of the ego does not extend into the unconscious. This, uh, this will be a key point later on in our studies of Jungian psychology. So let me ask you again. When you think of the unconscious, how do you feel? Well, let's just say I have respect for it. There is the answer I was looking for. Good, it seems you understand. You can't understand the mind's true form without knowing and respecting the unconscious. Essentially, we are residents of the unconscious so our thinking is biased towards it. We take the conceited view that we are the masters of our own minds, when in truth, the mind is nothing but a tiny conscious working to support the unconscious massive e energies. If you forget that, I'm sure you see now. Well then, our time's up. Next time I'll cover the amazing disposition of the minds as advocated by Jung. So when's today's lesson? Dang it, he's not here. Um, man, look at this. I cut, I cut so much time off of that. I'm so happy. Um, oh, that's gonna probably happen a few times where it's like, oh, I have to go back through like an entire like eight days. Oh, hey, it's you. Oh, you're. It's the girl that mistakenly put a love letter inside your shoebox. Did you happen to read my letter? Yeah. How could you, you jerk? You... You didn't... I had to open it to know what it was about so I could come to you and talk to you about it. I didn't even have the courage to sign it, and you and yet a totally random person knows my secret. Ah, uh, what's the point of trying to be secretive anymore? I really embarrassed myself with this much. If I, I've already embarrassed myself this much, I might as well go confess. How do you like that? Sure, okay. Female student ran off. Well, you should ask her how that went tomorrow. Yeah, probably. Um, what exactly are we doing today? The Mega Beef Bowl Challenge. Cool. Huh, where he's gone again. Hmm? Oh, there's a piece of paper on the floor. Come to think of it, the last paper you found here belonged to Marie. Something's written on it in cute handwriting. Sifa, listen to my voice. 
my shouting, bellowing voice. Here I am, pouring my blood into my words, yelling at the very edge of the world. I am the little mermaid, unable to return. The little mermaid, faded to foam. The little mermaid. Thank you for using the original version of that one. The <laughs> Disney version really watered it down. This appears to be a poem. Her sense of poetry is difficult to comment on. What? Did you read it? You read it, didn't you? I said no. No, it's not like that. It's not a poem. It's a... I'm yelling at the end of the world. That's not a poem. I don't know what I'm saying. Where is it just coming out? Stupid... I hate you, jerk. I can't believe it. Don't read my things. We blushes furiously. It would seem that Marie was just the author of a poem you just read. Why was that on the floor? I don't get it. Marie sulkily returns to her seat as Margaret just smiles at us from across the room. Or the limo, whatever. Okay, so we're once again in the rainy day people challenge. Um, trying to get the same thing that we've been getting the other times, understanding, courage, diligence, because we usually get a lot of knowledge from studying, so... Well, there's knowledge, so I'm gonna have to go back and redo this in a bit. Too bad, mister. There'll be 3,000. Come back soon. Thank you. Welcome home! Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, that was probably a really good cut from me. Thank you, uh, me editing things. Um, but, uh, I don't have the correct points. It stopped raining, but thunder was loud. You were scared, big bro? Not, not really. Okay, so we have to wait till Saturday to actually watch the Midnight Channel. That's kind of annoying. It stopped right as we got home. Ha Feels like the entire universe just hates us. Okay, so we're going to be... Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Uh, we're going to be hanging out with Nanako. For a bit. Um, we're not actually going to be ranking up with her. Uh, in fact, we're just going to be spending time with her to get her stat up. Um, she's one of the harder um, people to level up just because she requires a lot of time investment. <laughs> Nanako looks as if she's not doing anything. Since you have Principality, yes. You spend a precious moment with Nanako. Oh, by the way, the reason why we didn't, uh... Uh, get points in the, uh, shrine place the day before with Nanako is literally because I think, um, we need, like, six in total to bring, like, her up to the next point, And we only have, uh... And we could have only done it once, so there'd be no reason to do it. Whatever. I feel like their relationship is going to come closer soon. I believe there's no overflow. I believe 